Hi, my name is Kara. I'm an art history professor. And this short video is going to talk just a tiny bit about tests. So this year I've been trying to make tests that really help students learn rather than just testing what they've learned. As it turns out, that is not easy. It sounded like a really great project for this past year and I've tried a lot of different things and it takes a lot of work, but I think I'm trying to figure a few things out. So I thought I would share one of them that seems like it's really been working for my students. So what that is, is a type of question that I've been putting on every test, which I'm calling five new things. It does not have anything to do with cats. I just figured, why shouldn't I put five cats on this slide? So what the question is, five new things, is a pretty high point question that I put at the end of the test, kind of like you might have an essay question on a test, but it's not exactly an essay. And what it is, is this. So I tell the students to make a list of five new things that they've learned in the section of the class that the exam covers. So the unit or the lesson, whatever section the exam goes over. And for each thing that they list, they should explain a connection that they have to it or why they think they will remember it. I ask them to write at least two full sentences for each. This is something that sounds a little strange. It doesn't really sound like a test question, but I found that it helps in a lot of different ways. One thing that's interesting about it to me is that it forces students to do kind of critical thinking type connection making about things that they might not think about that way. So they might just think, okay, I memorized a fact about the French Revolution, or I memorized a particular formula in my math class. But instead of just reporting what they memorized, they're forced to make some connection to that. And that kind of deepens the experience of it. It makes them, you know, regurgitate the fact, but be more critical in the sense that they're making some connection to it. It also is kind of fun to grade. So these lists are pretty easy to grade. It doesn't feel like I'm really grading an essay. I don't correct grammar or worry about any of that, but I end up learning some stuff about the students. Sometimes they'll write down personal connections to things. Like for example, if they saw, a, you know, I teach art history, as I mentioned. So maybe they saw a particular artwork in the class that reminded them of something in their grandma's house. And then they'll talk about their grandma a little bit and say why she picked that artwork and why it reminds them of the one in the class. So that can be fun for me to read. Sometimes it's just about an immediate connection of why they'll remember it. For example, they'll say, well, the day that you taught that particular idea, I remember that the person next to me made a joke and I thought it was funny. And then the next class I was hoping to see them again, but they weren't sitting in the same seat. So it could just be some random thing like that, but it helps the student have it stick in their head. So five new things, easy to grade, interesting to read. I think it really helps the students. I might've already gone over these ideas, but just to kind of check and answer the question, why, why do this? Why have a question like this? Here are a few of the reasons. So one is that it gets students to go back over everything they studied as part of the exam. Even though it doesn't seem like a really heavy duty question, if you tell them it's going to be on the exam and the students know it's coming from me, that means when they're studying, they actually have to go through everything and pick out five things that they can make a connection to and write at least two sentences about. That just kind of forces them to go back and study. And it also has them study with an eye towards connection making, which is always good. It also has the students make a more permanent memory. So when they're explaining a connection to each thing they learned on their list, it just connects it up in their brain to something that's already in there. I'm sure there's a more technical way to explain that, but you know, this notion that you stick an idea that you just learned to something that's already in your brain, that makes sense to me as somebody who doesn't have background in the theory. And I think it helps students retain information from the class. From what they've told me, it really does. And I've noticed that they pick out things that I wouldn't have expected. So students will be connecting to ideas that aren't the most obvious ones or aren't the ones that I thought they would put down because it was the easiest to make something up about. So I think they're really looking and really trying to make those more permanent connections. And then lastly, it helps them to show who they are a little bit. You know, on a test, a student can feel like just a sort of number. But if you have this kind of question, they're able to put a little bit of their personality in there, show how they personally relate to what they've learned. And this makes them feel more ownership over the information and more ownership over the test, more confidence about it, more investment in it. All of those things I think are really good. Okay, so that's my pitch for the five new things question. I hope that somebody tries it and finds it useful.